What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to be talking about Beetlejuice 2 in this video here again today. We'll be going over some more alleged plot details that have not been shared, but they are to be announced at some point uh, when it comes to the marketing and the other interviews that are sure to come with the cast the crew etc we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about this cast member that's been confirmed and i'll share their role uh we'll be talking about some other alleged details about the story related to willem dafoe and also mainly discussing who one of the big villains is allegedly for the afterlife aspect of the narrative so beetlejuice 2 cast member has been confirmed arthur conti who we know was a part of the last days of filming that recently concluded and wrapped Arthur Conti will be starring in the film as Jenna Ortega's boyfriend, according to Deadline. They don't highlight the character's name, but you guys have heard me mention this person in my last Beetlejuice 2 video. Allegedly, Arthur will be playing Jeremy, a local kid in town who is a big fan of Lydia's supernatural ghost show that Astrid, who is played by Jenna Ortega, cannot stand. Uh, the report calls Jeremy astrid's boyfriend but there's a lot more complex things going on i have to say with this bond that lead to some very interesting character decisions or narrative decisions also based on the alleged details everything they were working on during those last days of filming seemed to be for jeremy and astrid's encounter willem dafoe we know recently came out and confirmed he's portraying wolf jackson in base who is basically going to operate as the head of police in the afterlife and he was an actor when alive starring as fred hard or fred hardballer in a cop franchise from the 70s before dying during filming of its reboot and i will add that he allegedly died on set due to a live grenade now he said this when speaking to variety he said i haven't seen any footage yet but it was fun to do and then he said i play an officer so he's confirming it i play a police officer in the afterlife so i'm a dead person and in life i was a b-movie action star but i had an accident and that's what sent me to the other side so what he's doing here is he's trying to relive his glory days by making himself chief of police if you will in the afterlife and he has this squad that helps him too allegedly so i i have seen the speculation that some people have had regarding charles Dietz dying and all i can say is he allegedly still has a very significant role to the story whether he is alive or not the way the character is handled also does not require the problematic star to reprise their role either. So some solid creative decisions were made to make Charles Dietz important to the narrative through and through, I would say. Now, I want to dive into this aspect of the waiting room really quick before I jump into the main villain part for the afterlife I'm going to discuss. Tim Burton also confirmed that the waiting room from the original film will return as he confirmed production had officially wrapped with this Instagram post. All I can say is there's some alleged familiar faces that you will get to see. One won't have a face to be honest, but that will make sense once you see the film. But there are some very interesting encounters in this waiting room. So last but not least, we're going to talk about the report regarding, or not report, <laughs> just gonna be talking about the alleged villain for Beetlejuice 2. So, Beetlejuice 2 allegedly has a few villains because you have one main afterlife villain and then one for the living realm of people. Monica Bellucci, we know, has been cast as Beetlejuice's ex-wife, who is actually named Dolores. I think Daniel RPK reported on this at one point as well. Now, allegedly, Dolores and Beetlejuice met during the Black Plague, and she is a soul sucker who is a part of a death cult, which was like a deal breaker for Mr. Juice. <laughs> So she has returned for her former lover, and this is why he remains desperate to marry Lydia. He's trying to escape Dolores. Dolores is causing mayhem, allegedly, in the afterlife, and that's what drives him back to saying, okay, I need to get after Lydia now, once and for all, to escape this crazy person. He's always still had an interest in Lydia, but it's going to be exacerbated when his ex-wife returns, looking to track him down while causing mayhem in the afterlife so dolores is the villain of this main story in the afterlife but the living realm has some interesting twists with its human cast you'll just have to wait and see what that looks like on screen i will say that again from what i know the story has a lot going for it that makes it a solid sequel it's not doing anything groundbreaking it's not necessarily going to be the best screenplay that is brought to life on screen next year but for a sequel to beetlejuice it's solid 
It has a lot of heart to it, it seems. The characters you will, you will like, they do definitely give a lot more for, uh, not Lydia. What is her, what is Catherine O'Hara's character's name? I'm drawing a blank on that. Delia. Delia gets a lot more to do when it comes to us spending time with her, seeing that relationship between her and Lydia on, on screen, and the relationship she has with Astrid. All of that stuff, I think, is going to effectively garner a lot of people's attention, people's interest when they watch, the way they handle the characters, it makes them relatable, from what I allegedly have been shared, have seen shared with me. So you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Are you excited for Beetlejuice 2? Why or why not? What do you actually want to see from Beetlejuice 2? Do you want to see a Beetlejuice 2 that is in line with the original and not really doing anything too extreme like how I, I'm telling you it really seems to be? It seems very in line with the original outside of maybe one or two things that I think are over the top. But if you don't want that and if you prefer to see a more wacky amped up Beetlejuice sequel, let me know why you would prefer to see that down in the comment section below. But again, Monica Belushi, she serves as the main villain, allegedly, for the story in Beetlejuice 2, for the afterlife anyway. And then in the human realm, the living realm, uh, the non-waiting room realm, I'll say, there's a few individuals who are up to no good. That's all I will say. You'll have to wait and see who they are and what their motives are and what they are doing in, in relation to our protagonist all to be revealed when this film drops in september of 2024 i think now that i think about it that's that's gonna be a pretty cool month because you get saw 11 and then you get beetlejuice 2 so i'm excited for these movies that are coming in september those two being the primary ones let me know what you think about all this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links to all my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video